Hi, this is Razor Wire, and this is day four of my twin twin series on signs and synchronicities. And this is our last um, stack of animal cards. You know, we have 17 in each, each of the piles, so if I didn't say. And I am using the Spirit Animal Oracle you know, to help come up with some of the, the animals that you might be seeing on your journey and, um, and why you might be seeing those particular animals on your journey. Uh, so the very first one we have is the armadillo spirit. Armadillo. <laughs> Sorry. And it is to set healthy boundaries. It's a reminder to set healthy boundaries uh, for yourself. You know they have kind of that protective um, shield. And it's important um, that you learn to uh, say no to the things that don't feel right for you. Uh, it's important that you have the, the confidence to say yes and to allow for the things in your life that do feel good, to let those things in fully. Um, you never want to you know, settle uh, for less than, than what you deserve, not even, not even with your twin. So if your twin is, is kind of encroaching on those boundaries, um, pushing you to do something you don't feel comfortable with or making suggestions that you don't feel comfortable with. Um, you need to be able to set boundaries even with them and not fear that you're going to lose that relationship. You know, we treat others how to treat ourselves. I've said that before. And it's important that you're treating yourself with respect. Um, if you're not treating yourself with respect, if you're frequently giving in to peer pressure, um, if you're frequently uh, going to great lengths to avoid conflict to such a degree that you um, that you are not standing up for yourself um, when it's really needed, um, then that that points to you know issues of self worth. Those people who are you know really meant to be in your life, those people who are a positive influence in your life. Um, they're going to honor your boundaries. They're going to respect you for putting those boundaries up in the first place. And your relationship with that person is going to go a lot more smoothly if you have those in place. Because you have to keep in mind that other people are not, they're not psychic, not even your twin. Even though you may have telepathic communication down to a, a you know, a, to a, a T, um, you still have to voice things out loud. You still have to state your needs and your desires to other people. You have to tell people no or when something isn't okay for you. Um, and that helps them a lot because then they feel safer in that relationship too. If your twin can trust that you're going to say no when something doesn't feel right, then they don't have to you know, constantly be tense around you, worried that they're hurting your feelings, worried they're overstepping your boundaries because they know you have the confidence um, to voice your wants, needs, and concerns, so they don't they don't feel lost. Um, if your twin is somebody who is very, we'll go with uh, promiscuous or sexual, and they're frequently you know making passes at you, and it seems like all they're interested in is is sex, but you're looking for something deeper with them, a deeper connection. Um, but you don't say no and you just, you know, go along with it, they are not going to know that you're looking for a deeper connection because that's not what your actions are showing. They're going to have no way of understanding that. And you might end up in a relationship which neither one of you actually wanted, but now because you just have this relationship that seems to be based on sex, neither one of you feels comfortable talking about the fact that you want something more out of it because you're afraid that you know you're going to lose the person if you if you try to make the relationship into something that it isn't. It's kind of like when you get locked in a friend zone sometimes, you know, you feel like, well, if I talk to this person about my feelings, I could lose the friendship. But if you're honest from the start about what you want and what you need, um, and you know how to set boundaries, and there isn't all, there's not, there's not going to be all of these miscommunications between the two of you. Um, and it's going to save you a lot of hassle and a lot of unnecessary drama. And see, now we have the vulture 
spirit, and this is nothing is wasted. You know, so this is about seeing um, the beauty in in all things in yourself. You know, even those things about yourself that you might not necessarily like. Um, there's a saying that I particularly like: that beauty is in the imperfections, right? Um, you know, when you're if you're looking at someone, friend or something, they might have like a crooked smile, right? Or they might have one green eye and one blue eye or something like that, you know? And that is something that you love, that you find so charming and, and it makes them unique. It makes them stand out in your mind. Um, and so often it is those little quirks, those eccentricities, those imperfections, which we love about the people in our lives, which we come to love very, very deeply. And there are things about that uh, with you as well. You might absolutely hate your crooked nose, for example. Um, but your twin might think that your nose is absolutely adorable. It might be like one of their favorite qualities. You never know. Um, the fact is that, you know, those things which make us unique um, are are beautiful. And we all have abilities and things to contribute, and it may not be, you know, like with our spiritual path, um, some of us may have these really big missions, you know, like, like we might start an organization or, you know, get into some, you know, very um, intense philanthropic work, or we might start a YouTube channel that reaches millions, um, but other twins, you know, their missions might not be on that same scale, their mission might simply be to be in a loving, committed relationship with their twin and to raise the vibration of the planet that way. And, you know, whatever we contribute in this world is its importance. And this is also important about not wasting your opportunity. Uh, this card is also about not wasting your opportunities when they present themselves not wasting the resources you have in front of you, not wasting your talents, not wasting your time waiting around, um, you know, being grateful for everything that you have right now, you know, gratitude. Um, and we've got moth spirit, which is surrender now. We talk about surrendering all the time on the journey, how important it is. And when you see the moth spirit, it's, you know, a reminder to let go of attachment, you know, stop asking how, when, why, you know, and just let be, you know, let things unfold the way they're going to unfold. Um, and we also know about uh, moths, uh, the male moth, for example, he um, can often sense a female moth from a, from a great distance. And male moths in some species don't even have mouths, so they don't even eat. They have one thing that they want to do, that is the purpose of their entire life, and that is to find a female moth and mate, and that's it. And your masculine has that same kind of sense of you. You know, so if you're worried that, oh, my masculine is never going to be able to find me, he doesn't know where I live, he doesn't have my contact information, he won't be able to find me, well, he will. You know, he has a sense of you, an instinct which draws him to you. And the more you raise your vibration, the more you shine your light, um, the easier it is going to be for your masculine to find you. But don't worry, he absolutely will find you. These little guys find each other from great, great distances. And then we've got snake spirit, time to heal. And we know that snakes shed their skin, right? Um, so this can be that it's time to release old patterns and habits and ways of being. It's time to, um, you know, spend some time, um, you know, meditating and, and healthy and engaging in healthy practices. Um, it may even mean that it's time to um, slow down a bit so that you so that you can heal because sometimes like snakes um, while we're going through this kind of metaphorical slough, sloughing <laughs> we can get a little cranky a little irritated a little itchy um, you know so you have to give yourself the time the space 
to heal because you're growing and that takes time and you can't rush that. Um, for some of you, this snake, if you're particularly religious, you might associate snakes with, with temptation um, or you know, you might even see snakes as something scary if you have, you know, a phobia. We all have different associations with the animals. So remember, if there is something I'm saying here that doesn't resonate with you personally, to go with what resonates with you. It's like when you're interpreting dreams, you know, sometimes what we see uh, in a dream, the symbol versus what we read about in a book is completely different. Sometimes it overlaps and sometimes it's just completely different. So you need to go with what, what resonates with you. And then we've got the peacock spirit and let it shine. And you know, peacocks have those fabulous tails, um, those fabulous colors, at least the male peacock does. Um, and this we talked about in, with the moth spirit, you know, letting yourself shine, you know, being your authentic self. Um, you know, raising that vibration, letting yourself be seen and be heard and be known by other people, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, having the confidence to say, hey, this is me, you know, this is just who I am. You know, because there is, I mean, no matter what you look like, there is literally nothing sexier than confidence. You know, it looks, or they, they don't account for very much because, um, if you've, I'm sure you've all noticed this, that you'll meet, like you see a person from a distance and you think, wow, that person is really, um, amazing, beautiful. Um, you're super attracted to them. And then you have a conversation with them and they're, you know, a jerk and they're, you know, rude. And, and all of a sudden they don't look so good. And the reverse is true. You know, you meet someone and they're not necessarily your type when you look at them, but then you get talking, you start to talk to them and you realize that you have a a good connection, you have a good chemistry, a good vibe between the two of you, and as time goes on, that person starts to look better and better and better and better, and suddenly they're the most beautiful person you've ever seen before you know it. And this can happen, you know, with your twin, um, that, you know, they might not have been your type, you know, when you first saw them, they might not have really been your type, but you still felt pulled towards them. Or you might feel that there's a disparity between how you look. You might feel like my twin is way more attractive than um, than I am. And you might worry that, that they're not going to be attracted to you because of that disparity. But the fact is, what they're seeing is that inner light. You can, I don't know if you can see this. Um, but they have a little heart, a glowing heart here. So what that is, is they're seeing your soul. They're seeing your inner light. And that's the kind of beauty that lasts forever. You know, the outer beauty, it kind of fades and changes and people have different opinions on it, you know, but it's the inner stuff, the inner beauty that lasts. That's what's drawing them to you. And then we've got the stag spirit and we've got the white stag here. And this is about taking the lead. Um, I've seen this, the stag is associated with the emperor. So like the divine masculine in his power. Um, people sometimes associate the stag, um, you know, the sign of union, but this is about, um, you know, taking charge of your own life. In this deck, it's about taking charge of your own life. I have a story about the white stag. I was, again, walking outside, talking to my twin telepathically, and for some reason, I just made a joke to him. Wouldn't it be cool if I saw a white stag? You know, that would be a sign um, that I couldn't possibly dispute, because, you know, white stags, that's really rare. And... I looked over, there was a herd of deer, and there was a white stag, <laughs> and it was literally like 20 seconds after I had said that, that I actually saw a white stag. And there is, in fact, a white stag living, living in this area um, that doesn't live that far from my house, and I don't see it often, um, and, you know, but there, but there he is. And what's amazing about it is to know that he's, that he's an albino, obviously. Um, but he is living amongst the other deer, you know, in a, in a group, or whatever, herd, I guess. And they have not rejected him, you know, they have not rejected this deer. So he has taken charge of his own life, you know, you know, he's a part of this group and they haven't, um, uh, he hasn't been left out for being different, you know, so that's great. So remember, you know, 
if you are, if you dare to be different, if you dare to be yourself, you're going to find where you belong. And then we've got turkeys, turkey spirit, and it is give with gratitude and grace. And when we see turkeys, we sometimes think of Thanksgiving, if we live in this, uh, the States anyway. Um, so turkeys are all about abundance right? They're, they're about abundance, they're about being, taking time to be grateful for what you have, and they're about giving and receiving. Um, sometimes it can be very hard for us um, to receive gifts or compliments, you know, especially if we have kind of low, low self-esteem. Sometimes we can argue when people compliment us. We can say, well, that's not true, or you don't mean that, or we can get uncomfortable, basically. Um, and I was like that when I was younger, but now, now when I receive compliments, I just say thank you because I realize that my opinion does not reflect um, on other people. It's it's just my opinion, you know, and er and everyone is entitled to theirs. And so when you're sitting there arguing with someone when they're trying to give you a compliment, you're disrespecting their opinion. Um, you're not, you know, you're not allowing them to express their own feelings and their own ideas just because they don't conform um, to yours, and that's not really fair. You know, you, you have to realize that that people, um, when they say um, that you're beautiful, that there is a really good chance that they mean it. You know, I've struggled with low self-esteem. And I remember I was at a party one time and I was, you know, dressed up and I was feeling kind of out of place and I was feeling a bit awkward. And, you know, I heard this, I overheard this woman talking, you know, and this, this woman was a little bit older than me and she had some, I don't know, she had some learning disabilities or something. And, and I remember hearing her talking and she was talking about me and she said, she's so beautiful. She looks like a, a doll and she was amazed. And, you know, I didn't, she didn't say that to me. She wasn't expecting me to hear that. Um, I just happened to overhear her saying that. And I heard the excitement in her voice and the enthusiasm with which she said it. And I realized that, you know, she really meant that. You know, I might not have, at that moment, I might have been feeling very out of place and awkward. And, and but, you know, to her, um it wasn't like that, you know, she, she thought that I was, was pretty cool, and it meant a lot to me, that compliment, because it wasn't said, there was no ulterior motive in saying that, you know, she didn't even expect that I um, would ever become aware of that, and it was just, it just happened that I heard her talking about me. And now we have the antelope spirits, and life is speeding up. So if you're seeing antelopes, it's a sign that things are starting to move forward, and they're starting to move forward quickly, kind of like with the Eight of Wands card. You know, it's that sudden burst of energy when you when you finally get when you finally unstick yourself. So if you've been stuck or stagnant for, or it feels like you've been stuck or stagnated in your journey for a while, and you're seeing this card, it can be a sign of movement and communication. Um, of things happening unexpectedly, unexpectedly and suddenly. Um, then we've got the elephant spirit, and this is about learning from the past. And they always have they have that expression that elephant the elephant never forgets. I think you've heard that. Um, and whenever I think of elephants, I I always think of the, the elephant graveyards and their reverence. Uh, for their dead and the deep emotional bonds that they build with each other. That's personally how I think of elephants. Um, but you know, everything that has happened in your past has, has brought you to where you are now on this journey. No matter how difficult, no matter how painful, no matter what mistakes you made, everything has led up um, to this moment, has grown you so that you, you know, could come into union with your twin, so that you and your twin can be together. You know, so remember that, as painful as it may have been, um, if it wasn't for those lessons, um, you might not be where you are today. You, know, you, you are who you are today because of what you have experienced. And you don't need to, to dwell on who you were in the past or anything like that. It's not about dwelling on the past. It's not about reliving it or holding on to it. It's just about, you know, 
respecting, you know, what you've been through as a person, you know, learning what you need to from that so that you can let go and move on. Because if you don't learn those lessons, they're going to keep coming back. Um, so maybe take a look. It could be time to reflect on the journey and all the things you've learned along the way through the triggers you've experienced. You know, there's that letter writing exercise where you write a letter um, to your twin that you do not send about how angry you are, you know, anything you're angry or hurt about. Um, I'm, ma I'm mad because you blocked me. And then you write a, a separate, a second letter and you say, um, I'm angry with myself for blocking myself. And then you talk about all the different ways that you have, you know, blocked yourself, gotten in your own way, um, or whatever you've learned from the experience of being blocked and you think you're twin. And then you can write a third letter after that um, from your twin to you, um, responding responding to your letter, where they can say in, uh, whatever it is that you um, want. And then to say, I have an example of that, actually, which I might go over in another video. Um, then we have the skunk spirit, and that is know your worth. Um, so this is another card about confidence and self-worth and not settling for less than you deserve. Um, not settling for, you know, um, for any, for anyone, even your twin. So if your twin is not ready, um, and they're not in a good place, you know, then not settling for them, not, not settling for that kind of relationship if it's not, you know, if it's not, um, resonating if it doesn't feel good to you if it, if it doesn't empower you you know you shouldn't be settling for breadcrumbs or whatever I was like, this is an expression <laughs> okay then we've got the chameleon spirit act as if okay so this is um, act as if you already have what you want um, there's a uh, powerful uh, what is this one of those attract when you want to attract abundance things where you think the, unis the universe um, for something as if you already had it. You know, thank you for the money flowing in. Thank you um, for the new job opportunities. You act as if um, whatever it is that you want um, has already come into your life, as if it is assured, as if it is, you know, guaranteed. And then we have oh, the parrot spirit, watch your words, all right? So parrots kind of just repeat whatever is said. Um, but words have power. You know, words have the power to heal or hurt. And this isn't just, you know, about what we say to other people. Um, this isn't just about, you know, losing your temper and saying a bunch of things you don't mean in the heat of anger. This is about the things you say to yourself as well. Because a lot of us are guilty of engaging in really negative self-talk. It's never going to happen. My twin doesn't feel the same way that I feel. Um, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm to this, I'm to that. So we're all kind of guilty of getting stuck in these kind of negative loops. And they do not serve you. So try to, whenever you catch yourself um, in one of those loops, try to break that cycle. You know, challenge um Challenge yourself instead to come up with things that that you like about yourself, things that you're grateful for. Um, you know, because that's this is you know when you're hearing all that negative chatter, that's just ego. And I don't know if this will be useful to anybody, but it's something that I have found. Sometimes on this journey, you will get some extremely powerful signs, and and your ego cannot um, discredit it. You know, it just, it can't. I mean, it tries everything it can think of to discredit this, this sign, but it is so powerful that the ego literally cannot pull it apart. And when that happens, the ego will turn on its, will turn on you and start filling your head with a bunch of stuff. Oh, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve to be happy. You don't deserve this connection. You're never going to be ready for it. It's, you know, it starts to put in self-doubt in a different way, it actually starts to come in and start attacking, attacking you because this thing has happened that is so big that has challenged your beliefs and the ego is in a position where it cannot defend itself. It cannot defend the beliefs um, that it has any longer because something has happened 
that has shattered that illusion and, and there's no, you know, rebuilding it. So it comes after you instead to bring down your um, resonance, uh, your vibration. Um, and this is something you probably have noticed. I've noticed it after I received really, really powerful signs or I've had dreams that, um, that were visitations, actual visitations where I actually felt physically my twin and there was nothing that my ego could say but could, you know, uh, you know dis discredit this. So then instead I became, I came in fear. I came in fear. I started to find myself with a lot of negative thoughts. Um, or I just started, or my ego started to tell me things like, well, this is really scary, you know, or there, there could be something wrong, you know, this could be, um, and it starts coming up with all these crazy explanations. Um, so be, uh, really careful about what you're saying, um, to yourself, what you're feeding into. And honestly, the best way to deal with ego is not to engage. You know, if you're starting to, to kind of collapse into these negative thoughts, the best thing to do is, is to just, um, you know, maybe meditate or, you know, engage in something that makes you feel feel um, happy. To set with the feelings um, for a while, to, let them, to, to feel the feelings but not to engage rather in the mental chatter. And that's what we do in um, meditation, right? We set with the feelings but we don't feed into the storyline. You know, we don't. We don't correct it. We don't, um, you know, justify it. We don't. We just don't engage. We just don't engage in it at all. We just allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. So in my case, I would feel the the feelings of fear or um, insecurity, but I wouldn't um, engage in that dialogue with myself about, you know. Um, that I'm not good enough or whatever, I, that I wouldn't engage in, but I would feel the feelings. I would, I would honor the feelings, but not engage in the mental chatter. Um, then we've got the horse spirit. Freedom is yours. And the horse is one of my favorite cards in this deck, actually. Um, because the horse card is actually about union uh, in this deck, and it's about, um, about love, apps, like unconditional love, accepting somebody for who they are. And, you know, allowing themselves the space and room to be who they are, to express themselves. You know, being secure enough in a relationship that you don't have to monitor everything your partner is doing, that you can trust them. Um, you, that you can trust them. You know, so this is this is a really, really beautiful card. Um, horses can also represent movement, you know, forward movement. And, you know, you have the white here white horse here, which, you know, stands for, for purity, right, purity of emotions, um, and sincerity, so, um, if you're seeing horses, particularly white horses, that's a really, really good sign, you know, in our old relationship paradigms, the relationships feel like a prison, right, we always hear that, oh, marriage, the old ball and chain, you know, we call our spouse that, um, because we don't allow each other this space to grow because everything becomes so tight and so constricted and so controlled and it's and, and our love is based on certain conditions and requirements and so forth. But in the twin flame journey, it's an unconditional love. And so the relationship doesn't feel like a prison. It feels like freedom, you know, like you can be yourself with another person fully. Um, so that's what that card is about. It's taking a bit longer today. I'm talking a lot. Um, swan spirit, time for a deep dive. And swans are something I see a lot, um, a lot on my journey. I remember one particular instance. I was out in the forest, and I was standing by this beautiful big oak tree, and I was praying, and I was praying for union and connection with my. Um, to, to connect with my twin, and I looked out, I looked off to my side, and there was this little clearing between the trees, and I saw swans in that clearing, you know, they, there was, apparently you could see uh, a river uh, from where I was, which I didn't realize because I was in the forest, um, but there was a little river flowing nearby, and there was a clearing just big enough that you could see the swans. Um, and, I, and that was a pretty special moment for me because at that time I was talking about 
my twin and about union, and I've kind of always associated swans uh, with my journey. Um, and some people associate swans with, with union. In this card, it's talking about time for a deep dive. You know, the swan has that really long, long neck and it reaches deep into the water. So it's reaching deep into itself. It's, you know, there is a lot more to you than you realize. You have, um, you know, um, reserves that you don't realize that you have deep down. You have a depth to you, an ability to love, which is much, much deeper than you realize. You know, we have um, the ability to give of ourselves um, fully and deeply, and it's a very, a very beautiful thing, a very, it's, it's a very beautiful thing when we give deeply of ourselves without expectation. Then we have the squirrel spirit, believe in yourself. Um... You know, and squirrels are industrious, right? You know, they gather nuts for winter. They're, um, they always manage to get into your bird feeders no matter what you do. They're pretty industrious, pretty clever little things. Um, uh, tenacious little survivors are also really adorable. Um, and, you know, this is a card about, about self-belief. Um, you know, believing in the resources that you have, in your own abilities, in your own gifts, and your own... Um, cleverness to um, survive. This can also be a, a part about security. Um, if you're seeing it with a masculine, he may be um, working on building a life uh, for the two of you. Uh, a lot of times masculines worry more about the 3D, you know, so they can be um, hard at work making room for you in their life, um, you know, getting a good job, saving that money and all of those things um, so that you can you can live more comfortably together. So the masculine kind of tends to worry a lot more about those things. You would just want to have them and be with them, but but they want to have something to give you. Lion spirit. We've got be generous of spirit. And whenever you see the lion um, spirit, you probably think of leadership or courage. Um, you might think of the strength card in the tarot because almost every version of the strength card in the tarot has a lion depicted on it. Um, you know, and the lion is about integrating our shadow selves. It's about um, being compassionate with ourselves, being generous with ourselves. Um, you know, it's about um, trusting in ourselves as well so we're not like you know beating our um uh, ego into submission here right we're not doing that because that doesn't work you try to beat your ego into submission it just gets it just gets bigger it just retaliates um it's you know it's kind of and if you um just indulge yourself constantly all the time um, you know, then, then that doesn't help either, you know, so it's, it's, it's a balance. It's a balance between, um, being firm, but generous, being strong, but vulnerable. And we all know that, um, it takes a lot of courage to open ourselves up emotionally. Like sometimes people think that speaking about your feelings, uh, makes you kind of weak, but actually it takes tremendous, tremendous courage to open up, open up. So if your masculine comes to you and they're opening up to you emotionally, um, think of all the courage that takes for them to do that, for them to be that vulnerable with you, especially if they come from generations where, where men were taught um, that that was not acceptable. And last but not least, we have the frog spirit, and it is clear out the clutter, right? Frogs are sometimes associated uh, with money, I think. Um, but in this, it could be time to clear your space, right? To do a little housekeeping. And so if you're seeing frogs, it is, that is a sign to, um, make room in your life for your twin to come in. You know, if there's really, if you're in a relationship that's not working for you, it might be time to end that relationship. Um, and, you know, time to heal from that relationship, time to move forward with your life. Um... Yeah, so it's about making room. Frogs are something, another one that I see frequently. Um, I remember um, 
you know, where I live in, in Sweden, actually, there are not that many frogs usually. And when I've, I've lived here for like 10 years, and at that point I had seen may, maybe two frogs. And then I started, then I was on the Twin Flame journey, you know, I started my journey, like, at the end of 2019, in December, and, um, you know, in, in 2020, I was out for a walk, and I saw hundreds of frogs, I mean, literally hundreds all over the road, I have never, ever seen so many frogs in one place, and it, up until that point, I'd literally only seen ten pro I mean, two frogs, sorry, in ten years since I'd been in Sweden. Um, so frogs are definitely something that I associate uh, with my twin, because since I came into awareness of him, I've been seeing frogs, um, even in, in nature, where I wouldn't usually see them because of the climate that I live in. Um, and that's crazy. And for me, uh, frogs represent something a bit different because I grew where I grew up. It was very warm and very humid. There were a lot of frogs. Um, and I, so for me, frogs kind of represent, uh, you know, innocence and childhood, and they kind of make me smile whenever I see them. So I don't necessarily think about cleaning my house when I see them. I just kind of think about youthful, youthful joy, you know, when I see them personally. But that's all the animal signs. I'm sorry this video got so long, but I hope it helped if you've been wondering about some of the animals you've seen. If there were any animals um, that you have been seeing that are not been included in this video, feel free to share in the comments um, what that represents to you. If you don't know what it represents, but you have been seeing it, you know, post in the comments and I'll see if I can um, answer your question and help you figure out what that sign might mean. Thank you for watching. Please like and comment.